Hey guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com in New York City. Uh, the two most talked about conditioners for leather boots are Venetian Shoe Cream and Sophia's Renovator. So let's compare the two so you can decide which one you want to use. Or to speak a little more honestly, if it's worth spending three times more money on Sophia's Renovator. So today I've got my trusty trench boots from Oak Street Bootmakers. Really nice boots made in Chicago with Chicago leather actually. This is natural chrome XL leather, which is probably the most popular leather for boots. And also because it's like undyed or it's a more natural color, it's easy to tell if it darkens or not. So I'm gonna condition one of them with Venetian shoe cream, one of them with Sophia's Renovator, and we're gonna see what they look like immediately after after applying the conditioners, what they look like a couple of hours after applying them, and then what they look like a couple of weeks after applying them. I'm gonna wear these boots around New York for a while to uh, make sure the leather softens up and really that the uh, conditioner is able to sink into the pores of the leather because uh, the appearance does change over time. That's leather, That's, it's a very dynamic substance. Leather is skin, and like skin, you need to moisturize it regularly to keep it fresh and happy, improve its strength, and reduce the risk of wrinkling and cracking. It really is the same as moisturizing your face, but while there are people who both condition their boots and moisturize their face with the same materials, like, like coconut oil, you can actually condition boots with coconut oil, but typically people condition leather with waxes and oils. The trouble is that shoe conditioners aren't edible, and by that I mean companies don't have to disclose the ingredients like they would if you ate it, you know? So I don't know exactly what's in these products, but here's what I have found out. In one corner, we've got Venetian shoe cream. I've got a lot of it here. Normally you get in like a nice little jar like this, but I have like an industrial sized amount of Venetian shoe cream because I have so many boots. Venetian shoe cream is described as containing fine oils, dental cleaners, and imported waxes formulated to clean, condition, preserve, and polish all smooth leather footwear and articles. I spoke to the guy who makes it, Phil Colias. I found out a little bit more information. I found out it has a blend of six or seven different waxes, each with their own purpose. So it's like one moisturizes, one shines, one preserves, and so on. And I know there are no thickeners or silicon or waterproofers in it. Phil told me that will quote hurt the leather because it has a coating that's very difficult to get off once it's on. Finally, it also contains some petroleum distillates, which helps to clean the leather. Like I said earlier in the description, like it helps to uh, gently clean the leather. The petroleum distillates do that. Uh, some people worry the petroleum can like pull out the color, but it's a very small amount. And again, it, it's enough to help to clean the leather as you're applying it, right? Um, I did clean these boots just before I came in here today. I, I just got these cleaned with uh, Cobbler's Choice. I used their shoe cleaner. I probably should have used their leather spot cleaner. You should clean your boots before conditioning, by the way, so that you're not like trapping dirt in the pores underneath the conditioner. So first you gotta give it a good clean and then a good brush down with a horse hair brush. So that's Venetian shoe cream. We've talked about the ingredients there as much as we can possibly know about the ingredients. In the other corner, we have Sophia's Renovator. Now I know it's technically pronounced Renovateur. I actually speak French, but I'm self-aware enough to know that pronouncing it in a French accent is dorky. So I'm just gonna say Renovator. Sophia is French. They're also very secretive with their ingredients. I know it contains oils and waxes. I got the safety data sheet though off of the company that imports it so I could find out as much as I could. I learned that it has a neutral pH. Uh, it has some coconut fatty alcohol and some long chain primary fatty alcohol as well. But the big difference between Sophia's Renovator and Venetian Shoe Cream is that Renovator contains mink oil, like rendered from the pelts of minks destined for the fur industry. I have a whole video on mink oil you can check out. Long story short, mink oil is unusually high in unsaturated fats for animal fat, but it doesn't go rancid like most unsaturated fats, so not as easily. So it's like a perfect in-betweener as far as fat goes. Um, you know, unsaturated fats that go rancid are like seed oils, that kind of stuff. This, uh, it, it doesn't do that. It's like sort of like a magical uh, in-between land for oils. So mink oil, it has a very long shelf life. It replenishes oil in leather fibers so it can be more flexible and durable. And it's also decent at improving water resistance because the oil goes into the pores and sort of creates a hydrophobic barrier around the leather. I mean, hydrophobic might be a bit of a strong term, but oil repels water. Just like when you have oil sitting in your ramen, you know, like water is polar, oil is non-polar. So they like to stay away from each other. So that's one reason why oil does help to uh, increase water resistance of a boot, if not technically waterproof it. So mink oil is known for helping to waterproof it and also for darkening leather as well. But Renovator is known for adding a lot of shine to your boots as well. And I don't know if there's enough mink oil in this to profoundly darken the leather, but you know what? There's only one way to find out. So let's condition these boots.
All right, so we're going to start with Venetian sugar cream, $3 an ounce. Typically, it's a bit less when you get a giant tub like this. Um, as I said, I've already given this a clean. I also gave it a good brush down with a horsehair brush. So now, just going to have some Venetian sugar cream. Now, no matter what you do, people on the internet will tell you that you are using too much or sometimes too little uh, sugar cream when you are applying it, right? That's just how the internet works. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it fairly minimal. The idea is that you want to have enough of the shoe cream to uh, to be all over the leather, but you don't want to have like a thick layer of it sitting on top of the leather. That's like the difference here. So we're just going to gently work it into the leather. It's fairly simple, but like don't go too crazy with it. You know, like use a fairly small amount. Here we go. All right, I think that is enough shoe cream for now. Uh, a couple things I forgot to mention um, is that A, my hands are clean. You want your hands to be clean if you're gonna be using it with your hands. You can also apply it with a rag or something, but like whatever. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, these boots, they are about two years old. They've never been conditioned, but the fact is I have, uh, I only wore them for a few weeks and then I did my review of them and then I put them in storage. So normally I wouldn't say that you should condition your boots after just a few weeks of wear, but they have been sitting in a box for a couple of years. That's not as, um, that's not giving them as much wear, obviously, as if they'd been getting worn. But nonetheless, over that amount of time, the leather should have gotten a bit drier, even though it was in a box uh, in the dark this whole time. So this is a long-winded way of saying I'm not 100% sure if these are going to need more conditioner or not because the leather is fairly old but hasn't been used a whole lot. So I'm going to apply the Saphir after this to the other boot. Then we're going to come back and I'm going to see if this boot requires more shoe cream. But uh, for now, I've used less than one capful of Venetian shoe cream on this. So I don't think anyone can tell me that I use too much, but I'm sure we're going to see in the comments anyway. Uh, brushing with a horsehair brush helps to, in addition to like sort of helping to bring about a bit of a shine, it also heats up the wax a little bit, um, which helps to sink in just a little bit more, although you do get a bit of wax on your brush, so. All right, so this is what it currently looks like after being conditioned. As you can see, it is uh, not crazy dark, because Venetian Shoe Cream is actually a very good conditioner, not the best conditioner, but a very good one. Uh, if you don't want to darken your leather. I would say the best one for not darkening your leather is Bic 4, Bic Moore's Bic 4. Um, but Venetian Shoe Cream is more highly regarded as far as like uh, helping to moisturize condition, uh, you know, slightly weatherproof, just a little bit, the leather and so on. Um, Bic 4 is good at conditioning and like moisturizing, but um, Venetian Shoe Cream is, is generally understood to be, yeah, better than Bic 4 at creating a really nice patina and so on. So it's a little bit darker, but um, yeah, we're gonna come back to this one in a couple of hours. And for now, all right, here we go with, Sophia's Renovator. Um, I just washed my hands, by the way, so there's less, less Venetian Street Creamy. All right, let's go. Consistency-wise, um, this is, it's not that it's thicker, but it's smoother, I would say. It also smells better. Uh, the Sophia's Renovator. Uh, with Venetian shoe cream, you can smell uh, the alcohol a little bit. It's not a very, very strong overpowering smell. It's not like it smells like turpentine or a gas station or anything. Um, but with, uh, yeah, the Sophia's Renovator, it, it smells nicer, which is nice. All right, that's just about it. I'm gonna let this sit for uh, a few minutes um, so that it has been sitting like about as long as the Venetian shoe cream was when we last saw that one. Then we're gonna have a comp comparison of how they look now um, after I give it a bit of a buff with a horsehair brush as well. And then we'll come back. All right, so it's been uh, about an hour and a half. Um, and I gotta tell you, I was really expecting the Sophia boot to be much shinier um, because I feel like in my experience when I've done Sophia on brown chrome XL, it's looked shinier than Venetian shoe cream. But putting the two of them side by side, man, like. They look really, really similar. Uh, it's true that Venetian Shoe Cream is a little bit darker on the foot here, but the Sophia one is a bit darker on the side, and I think it's probably just because it wasn't 100% the most even application, like not precisely, technically, uh, mechanically equivalent amounts on every square centimeter of the boot. Um, nonetheless, uh, they look pretty similar. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to put a bit of water on it and see if the water resistance is any different between the two of them. So they both beat up water pretty well, but it's true that on the Sophia boot, um, the water beads up more easily. Like there's a tiny little bit of a, I mean, it's not a stain that's gonna come out, but it's taking longer for the Venetian shoe cream boot to dry out. Like you can see the droplets there, like sunk into the leather just a little bit more than on the Sophia boot. So that, that 
holds up to the fact that Sophia has a bit more mink oil in it. Um, it's slightly better at water resistance. But there's not an especially dramatic difference between the two of them as far as aesthetics right now. I will say the mink oil one is a little bit more, it's a little bit more water resistant. Um, but otherwise, it's still darkened. Um, it's pretty similar amount of shine. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give it one more layer, I think, of conditioner. Um, then I'm gonna wear them and then I'm gonna come back uh, in in a week or two. So uh, I'll see you in a couple weeks. We'll see how the boots are doing. All right, that's uh, actually been like three weeks now. Um, here's a bit of footage of me applying a third coat to it at home. So I basically I gave these like three thin coats, which is better than giving it one big thick coat. And then I walked around in the Matan and the good news is that it's been a very snowy few weeks here in New York City and the water resistance has been tested uh, a ton. So let's quickly give them a little water test here. Uh, the theory is that Sophia will be more water resistant because of the mink oil. So uh, let's see. I'd say they're about the same. I'd say these are about the same, which has been my experience over the last few weeks. Uh, that's not to say that they have had the exact same results though. Uh, all right, the main thing here is that there's just not much of a practical difference on this Chromexa leather. Uh, it is true the Venetian shoe cream got a little bit darker around the midfoot than the Sophia, but that's just, that's like more because uh, it's much thicker than the Sophia's Renovator and it kind of pulled there. If I was a bit quicker to spread it around, um, I think it would've been fine. The water resistance, pretty much the same on the on both of these, I would say. Um, the second thing, the third thing that I wanted to mention is that walking around in the boots, the Sophia boot leather felt significantly softer uh, than the Venetian boot. Not to like an insane degree, but like bending and folding the tongue of the boots. Um, and also, also walking around with them, yeah, you can tell that the Sophia boot got a bit more flexibility. So if you happen to have Venetian shoe cream and Sophia's innovator, and you're conditioning your boot in order to soften the leather, which uh, a lot of guys do when they first get a boot and they're like worried about having a tough break in or something like that. Um, if that's you, if that's why you're conditioning your boots, uh, I would go with Sophia if you're willing to spend the extra money for it. Um, a few more things to note as far as differences go, uh, the Sophia smells better and because it's thinner, it is much easier to apply as well. Uh, and because it's thicker, Venetian is easier to get stuck in like eyelets and on stitches and so on. Uh, it's not really a big deal uh, as long as you like, just kind of brush everything vigorously and heat it up before it dries. Uh, if you leave it on there for like 10 minutes, it'll dry a little bit harder to get off. If you don't do that, as long as you give it a brush, uh, it's not a big deal uh, that it gets, it's easy to get stuck in eyelets and so on. And the last thing to note is that Venetian shoe cream is much, much cheaper and the average person just can't tell much of a difference between the two. If your priority is which one makes the leather softer, yes, I'll go on the record to say that's Sophia. Um, but that doesn't mean Venetian isn't good at softening, it's just not quite as good as Sophia. Otherwise, no massive difference between the two. Uh, both good at hydrating the leather, both good at preserving the color. Um, I should make it clear that I didn't compare the two products on different leathers, like uh, calfskin or cordovan. But as Chrome XL is the most popular boot leather there is, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with this test. So that's it, that's, that's everything I really wanted to say. Um, Sophia does do a little bit more softening, but Venetian is much cheaper, and there are no minks in it, which uh, is, that might sound a little bit silly given we're talking about dead animals, but as I mentioned earlier, there really are, there are significant uh, reasons to prefer boots without mink oil given animal welfare concerns, and that farming minks is illegal in a lot of Western countries, so much of it comes from China. So anyway, if welfare is a concern for you, or price is a concern for you, do a Venetian shoe cream. If softening is your priority, go with Sophia. If what you just want is something to condition the boots that will make them look nice, uh, restore a bit of life to them, and uh, extend their longevity, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other.